Welcome to Chapter 7, Negligence and Strict Liability. When someone's person or property is hurt, how far should society extend liability? The law has struggled for centuries to find compensation for the injured without making every citizen the insurer of all others. Oliver Wendell Holmes said that the life of the law has not been logic, it's been experience. In order for a plaintiff to win a negligence case, they must prove that the defendant failed in five areas. The defendant must have failed in the duty of due care. There must be a duty owed to the plaintiff. There must be a breach, and this duty must be breached. There must be factual cause. The injury must have been caused by the defendant's actions. There has to be foreseeable harm. It must have been foreseeable that the action would cause this kind of harm. And of course, there must be injury. The plaintiff must have been hurt. If a defendant could have foreseen injury to another person, she has a duty to him. In some states, a social host serving alcohol to an adult may be found liable for harm by the person drinking the alcohol. Many states have dram shop laws, making liquor stores, bars, and restaurants liable for serving drinks to intoxicated customers who later cause harm. As stated in the Affirmative Duty to Act, in general, the common law does not require a bystander to assist a person in danger. Hernandez v. the Arizona Board of Regents is a case of duty of due care. The University of Arizona chapter of Delta Tau Delta fraternity gave a welcoming party for new members. The fraternity's officers knew that the majority of its members were under the legal drinking age, but permitted everyone to drink alcohol. Minor John Rayner left the party, drove negligently, and caused a collision with the car driven by Ruben Hernandez. Rayner's blood alcohol level was .15, exceeding the legal limit. The crash left Hernandez blind, severely brain damaged, and quadriplegic. Hernandez sued Rayner, who settled the case. Hernandez also sued the fraternity, its officers, and national organization, all fraternity members who contributed money to buy alcohol. The trial court granted summary judgment for all defendants, and the Court of Appeals affirmed. Hernandez appealed to the Arizona Supreme Court. The issue is this. Did the fraternity and the other defendants have a duty of due care to Hernandez? Judgment for defendants reversed and the case rem remanded for trial. The court's opinion stated the following. Traditional authority held that when an able-bodied man caused harm because of his intoxication, the act from which liability arose was consuming, not furnishing the alcohol. However, the common law also provides that one who supplies something for the use of another whom the supplier knows or has reason to know to be likely because of his youth, inexperience, or otherwise to use it in a manner involving unreasonable risk or physical harm to himself and others is subject to liability for physical harm resulting to them. A growing number of cases have recognized that one of the very hazards that makes it negligent to furnish liquor to a minor is the foreseeable prospect that the young person will become drunk and injure himself or others. Accordingly, modern authority has increasingly recognized that one who gives alcohol to a minor breaches a common law duty owed to innocent third parties who may be injured. We join the majority, majority of other states and conclude that as to plaintiffs and the public in general, defendants had a duty of care to avoid furnishing alcohol to underage consumers. Arizona courts, therefore, will entertain an action for damages against one who negligently furnishes alcohol to those under the legal drinking age when the act is a cause of injury to a third person. The lower courts found for the defendants. Why do you think this was? Well, presumably, they found that the defendants had no duty to Hernandez or the general public. They would both have found that Rayner, the driver, had a duty, but not someone who bought him alcohol. What is the logic behind the lower court's position that a person or organization that gives someone liquor has no duty to the general public? 
Well, historically, courts have held that it is a drunk driver who brought the harm on himself and others by getting drunk in the first place, and that injured parties could look only to the driver for compensation. Courts often held that a host, whether a social host or an organizational host like a bar or fraternity, could not foresee the harm or, as a matter of public policy, should not be liable for such harm because extending such liability that far would inhibit social events and would create an almost endless field of potential liability. If victims of criminal attacks are unable to obtain compensation from the perpetrator of the assault, they are now likely to sue the owner of the premises where the crime occurred. Landowners have a duty to not injure trespassers intentionally. A landowner may be liable if a man-made item on the land attracts children and a child is harmed. They should also warn of known but hidden dangerous conditions licensees are unlikely to discover for themselves. Lastly, landowners should protect people who they invite onto the property against dangerous conditions that a reasonable person would be unlikely to, dis to discover on his own. A defendant breaches his duty of due care if they fail to behave the way a reasonable person would under similar circumstances. Courts have found companies liable for hiring and retaining employees known to be violent when those employees later injure co-workers. Negligence per se refers to when legislatures set a minimum standard for certain groups of people, especially children, and when a violation of that statute hurts a member of this group, the duty is breached.